Let's bring in uh, David Farenthold, our, our favorite numbers guy, investigative reporter with The New York Times. David, thank you very much for waiting. Talk to me about um, how Donald Trump might be able to pay this back. Well, if he waits long enough, he'll get money from his uh, special purpose acquisition vehicle, Truth Social, which got approved by the SEC. You know, he may have some money coming from that. In the meantime, he has a lot of cash on hand, and he also has a lot of real estate. So I don't think anybody should expect we'll see Donald Trump in a barrel walking down Fifth Avenue anytime soon. He owns a lot of really important real estate. He owns, estate, he owns stakes in some pretty expensive buildings in New York and, and San Francisco. If push came to shove, he could sell any of those and pay this. I think the bigger consequence for him will be that that starts to shrink this empire, which is already shrinking, and, and sort of make you ask, what's the point of the Trump organization? Is, is it just to house Donald Trump and give him a place to have parties, or is it really a business? Um, David, um, in, in trying to understand the motivation that, that Donald Trump's team had in, in refusing to, to give an inch on this, I mean, one of the notes that, that Judge Ngoran makes is that there is no remorse that they only gave on the square footage of the Trump penthouse in Trump Tower. That's the only place they said that they made a mistake. What is the motivation from your reporting on the organization to not show any contrition? This is how they approach legal fights, and they have for decades. Uh, they never admit defeat. They never admit fault. They never they, they push the, the they sort of wage war on the actual process of the judicial process. Never admitting fault, never sort of complying with the rules, trying to delay and attack the judge. That's been the hell they've done things forever. They've never ever tried admitting fault and showing remorse. I don't expect them to stop now. I mean, remember also, no one in this company is empowered except Donald Trump. Even Eric Trump, who runs the business day to day, is not empowered. Donald Trump's the only person who really has any power there. And so, what the way he wants to act, the way he wants to take this on, and always has, is the way everyone else is going to follow. What about with um, the Trump team? The organization says in their statement, every member of the New York business community, no matter the industry, should be gravely concerned with this gross overreach and brazen attempt by the attorney general to exert limitless power where no private or public harm has been established. Uh, David, have you heard that from other um, businesses, other organizations who worry about this? No. And here's what's important to know about this. Trump has always tried to sort of cast himself as sort of a, a, you know, a martyr for a broader community or to say, hey, look, what I did is just what everybody else did. You know, I'm getting punished for a thing that's common in, in New York real estate or in New York. When we talked to experts about real estate assessment who know this world, they said, look, nobody does what he did. Yeah, sometimes there's a little bit of wiggle room. There's a little bit of, you know, pumping up the numbers to make yourself look better. Nobody makes up houses. Nobody makes up, you know, extra floors to a triplex. Nobody makes up, you know, acreage on, on lots the way they did. They, nobody makes up facts and uses those fake facts to justify a, a, a bigger value. So it's not like he's doing something that other people are doing and they might have to worry. What he did was sort of in a class by itself.